and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Northboro. Uh, if you haven't seen the show before, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. There are 70 of us, um, 40 in Worcester, 20 here in Westboro, next town over, uh, where I am, and then 10 in Boston. And, and But as you know, if you've watched these shows, these shows aren't about law, although I do nothing but elder law. They're really about my friends Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. If you've seen my president and their parents, Frank and Mary. And if you've seen my presentations uh, at the library, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in their life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And after they die, they're going to leave things to Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And if you're in Northboro, that means that you want to stay here. You want to live your life here, not far away. You don't want to go see Peter in San Diego and Paul in, in Cincinnati. No, you want to be here. And so the question is, who are the people you need to know and what are the programs you need to know about in order to stay here? Now, one of the most interesting people that I've met in this regard is a guy named Doug Peck, whom I've invited over to be my guest. You know that I've usually had a, my, my, a good, my good friend who is my co-host, but she has abandoned me and gone to Florida for the winter. So unfortunately, you're going to be watching me alone with uh, guests until May um, when Anita Hagspiel comes back. So in the meantime, Doug Peck, um, um, runs an organization called Seniors Helping Seniors. Now, if you're, you're a senior, you're all aware of kind of home care agencies and stuff. But you probably don't know that there's one where actually all the employees are actually seniors, help, hence the name Seniors Helping Seniors. So I wanted Doug to come on to talk to you a little bit about that, both in terms of in case you need some help, but also in terms of in case you want a job. So Doug, thank you yes. very much for coming on. Good to be here. Can you give us, once again, a little <clears throat> background? I know that you know you, you, mm -hmm. I think you grew up in like Ash, far away in Ashland, mm -hmm. I grew up right? far away and now live so far away in Southboro, right? Yep. So you're not totally local, right? Right. But, but so how did you end up doing what you're doing? And then let's talk a little bit about what that is, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, it, it is a very interesting business model. I did grow up in Ashland. I've been in Southboro for 40 some odd years. I've uh, had three kids come through the Algonquin Southboro system, which is a great school system. Yeah, so you've driven here a few so, times. Yeah, I've driven here, here a few times. Here we are in the yeah. home, the home <clears throat> of the Mecca in Algonquin yes. right now, right? I met Algonquin. the assistant, the vice president, the vice principal a lot of times. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, so uh, I actually, uh, I had a different job. My career was in human resources yeah. in corporate America for 30 plus years. Um, I never really retired from that, but I went out on my own, was doing a lot of consulting work, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But my father had passed away, and my mother lived in Ashland, and she, like Frank and Mary, said, I've been in this house for almost 50 years. I don't want to go to a nursing home. I don't want to go to any place else. Right. I want to stay here. Right. So, and she didn't want to move in <clears> with you either. She wanted to she stay didn't in her, want to she her move. She wanted to stay She didn't want house. to move either. Yeah, yeah. Um, I happen to be the closest sibling. I have a younger sister and a younger brother. They're both in New Hampshire. So I was the one running back and forth to the house to do uh, you know, the to-do list every week and taking her to doctor's appointments, et cetera. Okay. Uh, and not that she had a lot of medical issues, but uh, even I did that for four years. And even towards the four years as she was getting up into her late 80s, yeah. um, it became more and more frequent. Right. Um, in the nature of things. In the nature of things the in general. Yeah, yeah. She was, she was uh, re more reluctant to drive. She had some eye issues. We had going to eye doctors on a regular basis. So all those, all those things that come up. Um, but, you know, I would, I would be there. I would rush in, do the jobs, and rush home. And, and my wife was the one that really taught me. that, look, what she really wants you to do is go over and just sit and have a cup of tea with her. Because as I looked around the neighborhood, m most of the people that were neighbors for hers for all this time are gone. Yeah. yeah. They had gone to live with children or our assisted living, or they had passed. Yep. And I'm, and so, I'm sure that your <clears throat> mother and the, your father, right. I can feel it with myself now. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm going to turn 70. My, you know, my wife's about 69. Mm -hmm. You tend to stay, you, you tend to, to stay, be with yourself, right. be with each other, right. you know, and, and it, almost increasingly as you get older, mm -hmm. so that when one dies, wow, it's really, a, there's not a lot of people, folks around. There's yeah. not a lot, because yeah. sometimes you know, my father had a lot of contacts, but then they sort of go. They go away as yeah. well. So, um, you know, as I was doing all this, I was thinking, how do I find the time for this? But also beginning to realize how important that was to her. More right. important than me to fix a light bulb or unclog the sink or to shovel anything. I get people to do that. 
but she really right. wants to spend some time and quality time with, with people. You. And <clears throat> one of my, uh, in, when I was doing HR work, uh, I really was focusing on, so, and, and I was getting older, and I was seeing it was harder for me to get another job, harder for my yep. friends to get another job, but I always felt that you needed to be useful, that you needed to have some type of a, of a purpose, a to point. be a point, to be yeah. engaged as you get older. That doesn't go away. Right. So when I heard of this, and it's a franchise, it started in 1998 uh, in Reading, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. I said, this could be something really good. First of all, I could this help the seniors. Se seniors helping seniors. Right, the seniors helping seniors. Yeah. I could help the seniors who actually physically needed the help. And I could provide a job, a good job for people who wanted to still be engaged. They were maybe in their early 60s, mid 60s, early 70s that still wanted to do something, but not on a full-time basis. And so tell me, what do, these, what do <clears throat> folks do? So what do your folks do, and who again, typically are they doing it with and for? Mm -hmm. So again, we work with other seniors in either in their home, in independent living, in assisted living, wherever they might be. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it is, uh, particularly out here in the suburbs, uh, in their home. Uh, so we drive them to doctor's appointments. Sometimes we go in with them to doctor's appointments. I mean, again, I used to do a lot of this myself, so I know. Yeah. I would take somebody to an audiologist. Well, you walk into an audiologist, there's 20 people in front of you, you know, because they're all so busy. So you don't want to just leave your 85-year-old mother <laughs> sitting there not knowing when you know, she's going to get in. It's going to be delayed, whether it's going to be a half hour or 45 minutes. Right. And then you know, they're anxious just sitting there because they're nervous. They don't know when they're going to get called and somebody's left and now are they going to get picked up on time or whatever. So we stay with them, we talk with them, and really it's, you know, it's, a, it's a socialization process that we offer along with the other tasks. Yeah. We can grocery shop for them, we can help them prepare meals, we can prepare meals for them. We do what I would call very light housekeeping. We're not house cleaners, but we can help people pick up, make their beds, it's very hard to make a bed when you're using a walker, for example. Right. Or even right. to work by a stove when you have a walker. You shouldn't be carrying hot things and trying to that use could... a walker at the same right. time. <clears throat> but the big thing we do is provide that socialization. Because what's becoming epidemic in this country is loneliness. And, you know, <clears throat> so when somebody comes over, just to sit with them and watch their favorite show with them sometimes. Right. Or to sit with them and a lot of them, like my mother had, she loved to read and she used to read the newspaper all the time, but as her eyes got worse, she couldn't do that. So we read sometimes the paper to people because they still get real newspapers. Real newspapers. <laughs> I suppose, and you, you know? describe that, you know, so much it feels like it's just a function of, to some extent, the success of seniors mm -hmm in living longer and living better yes. and having the economic resources mm -hmm. to be able to stay independent. Because right. I think of my, you know, so I remember going to visit Meme's house up in mm -hmm. French Hill in Marlboro, you mm -hmm. know, and my auntie Vaughn, yeah. who had gone and moved in with Meme, mm -hmm. right? And, and a lot of times that's how it would work, or a right. lot of times the, the <clears throat> parents would move in with the kids, um, um, often fi just because financial there was a financial necessity. Right. Right. But now you've got people who've been able to stay home. They've mm -hmm. been able to keep Frank and Mary, been able to keep their house. Mm -hmm. Now Frank's gone. Now there's this house, you know. Right. This is, so now, now go back and tell me, so who typically, who, like who, who works for you? What, what kinds of folks are drawn to these kinds of jobs. And once again, you're not talking about volunteer jobs, you're right. talking about these actual are, jobs. These are paid right? jobs, they're yeah. W-2 employees, we yeah. thoroughly screen them. Uh, if we do direct deposit, they get a direct deposit every two weeks. They're covered by all of our insurances. Yeah. Um, but we have a really wide variety of people. Mm -hmm. We have um, retired nurses. nurses. Retired nurses love this job because right now a nurse's job is often spending the first half of their shift dispensing medicine. And then, you know, they never get to spend 10 minutes with anybody. And that's not they, why they went into nursing. That's not why they went to nursing. Right. Here, they right. can spend two or three or four hours with somebody and really get to know them. And again, they're not dispensing medical advice, although they always have their nurse's eyes. So if they see swollen right. ankles, they're saying, hmm, there might be some heart issues going on. 
You know, they're yeah. watching the they're watching their food consumption to see this right. person's not drinking enough, you know, and going to get dehydrated. Another thing that happens when you're living alone, you're not usually right. thinking about drinking water or drinking enough tea or whatever right. uh, to keep as hydrated as you should. So in many ways, those, so we those have, are right I have, I've had business well, managers, yeah. salespeople, teachers, people who like being with people. Yeah. And oftentimes, they also have taken care of an elderly relative. It could have been a spouse. It could have been their parents. It could have been their grandparents that, they, that lived with them and they grew up with them. And right. now they say that was a wonderful experience. And nowadays, the families are just so scattered that it just doesn't happen anymore. Right. Not like it used to. It's so, much harder. <clears throat> I mean, once again, so we've right. got three. Mm -hmm. I have a daughter in D.C., I have a daughter in Austin, Texas, I have a son in Colorado Springs. Yeah. So as, and, and we're not moving. We're, right. you know, we're not even going to Northboro. Right. We like it in Marlboro, yeah. right? But as we get older, we, they, they're not coming home. Right. You know, they, love, they love their own mm -hmm. place, and we're very happy for them. We, you mm -hmm. know, it, right. But what that means is, unless that, there is that kind of community of folks, mm -hmm. right, or we know folks that, can, that we can connect to, that's really hard. Mm -hmm. So, and, and one of the things, I remember once you were telling me about this, and I said to myself, well, one of the nice things about this <laughs> It's like you actually know the music of the people right. that you're talking to because you kind of come from that generation, you know, and you know the movies. They're, you know the movies, so, the, the whole history, and, yeah. and that's so the frame, big piece of it. because yeah, frame of reference. Right. Yeah. Now, a lot of the folks we deal with have just what we call minor cognitive impairment. They don't have really dementia yet, but they don't, their short-term memory isn't what it used to be. Right. But they remember, you know, the movies from the 40s, the movies from the, the 50s, the big band era, yeah. so that whole was really, you know, part of their growing up, yeah. and what they really remember best. So when we bring somebody in who is, could be close to their age, um, they they have a lot in common to talk about, and right. uh, it's it's really a wonderful thing to see because they really do end up bonding so, because there's yeah. just more in common. Oftentimes, the person looks and says. This could be, maybe this was an old neighbor of mine. They don't always, we don't wear uniforms or anything that says seniors helping seniors. So, you know, they think, it, well, maybe it's an old neighbor or somebody from my faith community or could have been a friend of my daughter's that's coming over and just being like a friendly neighbor to me, which, which you would, don't have anymore so because everybody's gone. Because people are gone. So right. you have a variety, so there's a variety of employees. Huge variety. And in terms of like typically, how old are they? How old are your employees? Uh, they're both men and women. Yeah. We have a lot of call for men now yeah. because with new advances in medicine, men are living longer. The difference between, age difference between men and women is, is getting mortality. smarter. Yeah. 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 Um, our average age uh, right now is probably around 68. Mm -hmm. so, so for a lot of, but, you, and, but you've got folks that quite have, a bit older. We have folks that are in their 80s. So, so for, so for folks who are just kind of <clears throat> interested in this, mm -hmm. And by the way, we'll make sure that there's, there's some right. you know, information on yeah. the screen so that if people want to contact you. So mm -hmm. that's really important. Mm -hmm. Now tell me a little bit about the people that, who, who call, the people that you're caring for, <clears throat> to, so that folks can get a sense of that too. You know, like kind of, if, 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 that's, if that's a, just kind of talk about that. And then I wanted to also <clears throat> talk about that as it relates to right now. I know folks may be mm -hmm. seeing this after Christmas, seeing mm -hmm. the show after Christmas, right. but we're recording it the week before Christmas. Right. And you can kind of talk a little bit about the we issues that kind of surround the, right. the holidays. Yeah. Okay. So just to give you a quick scenario, Our, while we do very long shifts, for the most part, people bring us in for three or four hours at a time. Mm -hmm. So somebody working for us may have a client that they see twice a week. So it might be eight, 10 hours, sometimes 12 hours a week. It's not like you're going to a you know, someplace where you're going to be for eight hours. We do some of that, yep. but by far the big majority is two to three hours. The shorter shifts, yeah. We're often contacted by uh, the children uh, of the parents. They come back. They'll, this, this is, we'll get really busy in January because the, the kids will have come home and see that. From, from uh, visiting. From the visiting, folks. and they'll right. say, I see mom needs some help. You know, right. there's food in the refrigerator that's three or four weeks old. I, I know I can just see that she has has been failing a little bit faster than what I can divine on the telephone right. calls every week to her. So they want somebody there around her because she's not getting out. She needs to have company at home. And we finally convinced Ma, right. given the fact that she's now 85 or 90, mm -hmm. 
that she's not going to run out of money, that right. she can actually afford to do something like this right. to, to really improve the quality of her life, right. which is the kind of the point. Because when she talks to her kids, the kids are like, Ma, just, you know, right. just take care of yourself. Just take care of yourself, yeah. you know. And, and, and perhaps my, has, this is the hardest part, mm -hmm. has kind of gotten over just saying, I don't want anybody in my house. Right. Right? Or I just want the kids in my house, except the kids live in yeah, D.C. and Austin yep. and Colorado Springs. Yeah, I get it. So a, a lot of our new clients are reluctant to have us in there. Yeah. But I'll tell you, after, after two times, three times at the most, they really enjoy the company. They don't want to admit that at first, but they do enjoy having somebody around. You know, I, you know, because I like, they, they still like to, my mother always had to go out and have lunch, even if it was McDonald's. It was just to get out to see other people, right. you know, have a sandwich, have a coffee. I've taken uh, some people to, uh, you know, uh, Harry's restaurant up here. Um, I had a client uh, in Westboro who every Friday night would go there with her husband. And now her husband's not there anymore. She hadn't been there in months. She wanted to go. She wants right. to go on a regular basis. So we take her out there because it brings back memories. They're good memories. It's nice to go out and visit those places where you were, you know, where you were with your spouse who's no longer around. So um, one of the things that I mentioned yeah. on one of my other shows that I found a new way to express what we do, mm -hmm. and that is people are medicine for people. I love that. And yeah. really it is because right. what you're looking at, again, is people who are alone. They don't not necessarily admit they are alone. But it has a, uh, a not a very good. It has an impact on your health. It's been proven time and time again, and this is you being medicine for people and really helping them. The one surprising thing for me is how much the our, the people that work for us really get back from the clients. So many of them tell us that I really get back more than I give, because it's instantly rewarding for people. For the most part, they are very, very grateful that you're there. Yeah. Once the initial piece is over with, they're just so happy to see you coming in because they know that you're, you're coming in with a smile, you're coming in that something's going to change, you're not going to be bored all day long. Now, something's going to happen. When you talk about that, I was, I, and now I know you, I, mm -hmm. I've heard you t tell, me this, tell me this story. Mm -hmm. Regarding a, a woman who was with a young, yes. with a, her younger family, right? But then, so can you just kind of talk about that? Because yes. I think that the, that goes to right to certainly to the issue of really, really the woman really getting something out of it, but also the caregivers themselves, right, being able to share some things and and what loneliness means. Yeah. It goes right to that because it was a a, a, a family, uh, you know, two very successful executives, uh, two teenage boys. I think at one at the time was junior high school and one was in high school. So it was a busy, hectic household. And the son's mother, his father had passed away, moved in with them. Yeah. So they're in a beautiful home in Southboro. But everybody's going every which way everybody's, all the time. Right. And she was just so lonely there because no one was really paying attention to her. They had a summer home in Maine. Right, not out of, out right. of malice no, no. or anything, but just they, people They thought applying. they were providing everything for her. Right. It was a beautiful room, beautiful, you know, all the facilities. Right. Um, but, they, but, you know, to their credit, they did realize that she was getting, you know, look, there was nothing for her to do all day. So they brought us in, and I brought two people in to uh, spend time with her, take her out for walks in the neighborhood, have lunch with her just there, sit down. Uh, you know, a lot of people at that age had hairdressing appointments, they got permanence every Friday or Thursday. Right. We took her there, which was in Framingham, uh, you know, that and again, good. keep her company and everything. So it was really good. Um, but the other big piece, which I really didn't realize at the time, was both of the people that I had coming over were widows themselves. Mm -hmm. And it turns out this was the first time, it was coming up a year anniversary of her husband's passing, where she never really had a chance to talk about that with her son. So many things had happened. She moved right in. Her, fam her friends' connections had sort of gone because right. she was now in the different home and a different environment. And, and it's, it's different talking about it with, with somebody your right. age versus talking about it with your son. Right. That's just not the same. It's not. The, you it's can't your son. talk and about it extent, with your son. to some extent, you don't want to no. be going through that. You don't. Right? You don't want to burden him with that. You don't right. want to let him see the grief that you're feeling. 
So it worked out, both of them, they talked to her, both had different experiences, but she got a lot out of it. Um, she was um, taking some medicine for depression, and after about two months, they cut that medicine in half. That's what I say, people are medicine for people. Right. Because it's really just that kind of building a new relationship and bonding and really being able to express yourself and not be and have someone that you can really talk to about things. And, and, and it so occurred to me when you did that story, because I, I was, I, I'm sure as a widow, mm -hmm. right, you don't necessarily think that's actually something that I can really give to somebody. Right. Is the fact that I've gone through that, right? right? And that's something because you have to have gone through it. <clears throat> you're not going to yeah. just, you're not going to, you know, read your way out of yeah. this. It's really talking to somebody who's gone through it. So right. that's really a gift it's to really these a other gift. folks. So can you talk for a, once again just a little bit about the holidays? The holidays and about fa how families <clears throat> approach the holidays because you, you, obviously you, you know, you deal with this a lot mm -hmm. yourself. You got you got folks that are dealing with a, a lot. Right. So in terms so, of strategies for dealing with the holidays. Yeah, I, I would say a, a couple of things. Again, um, if you haven't visited for a while, now's the time to do two things. One is to really keep your eyes open and ears peeled in terms of what has changed because you really can't get a sense over the phone what's going on. Look in the refrigerator. See if there's expired food in the refrigerator. Look around. See if things are in place or out of place. And... Um, Watch carefully how they get up in the morning. What time did they get up? Did they have trouble dressing themselves? They don't want to admit that. So right. you, just, you be careful and watch all these little things. Um, but also, really spend some quality time with them. I know if you're coming back here, for you probably have two or three days, and it's going to be rushed. But they're at a much, much slower pace. So when you bring that sense of, you know, that speed into their house. It really is disruptive. To Especially them. when you're coming in with your family, of course. Especially right. when you're coming in with the family. Right. If you have children, have just one go over and sit with her, uh, sit with your grandmother or your mother for a while by themselves. Make it a little quiet space where you can talk to them and get to know them. That's what they're looking for. You know, the idea of, you know, mom used to do entertain all the time. She had the big Christmases and everything. That's a thing of the past. You really need to think about what some new traditions might be. You do probably don't want to go out to a big restaurant, fancy dinner, even though that might be a tradition of yours, because it's just noisy. She's not going to be able to hear anybody there. She wants to be with the family. She doesn't want to be with everybody else in the room. Right. Much nicer is to have a quieter dinner at home. Even if you have to order the food in, do it at home. That way everybody's just so much more comfortable because I'll tell you, at a certain age, they don't want to go out at 8 o'clock for dinner. It's cold. It's dark. They are, if they have any type of uh, you know, memory issues, it's just going to confuse them as to yep. what's going on. So you really want to simplify it and sim for right. folks. And really give, people an, uh, give those people an opportunity to talk to each person who was there. Right. I know when you, were doing that, when you were doing that story, I was thinking about a good, good very good friend of ours <clears throat> um, whom we brought out to her... 98th birthday. Mm -hmm. And so we did an event, you know, went mm -hmm. to the Wayside Inn and this is yeah. great and everybody comes and blah, blah, blah. But it was, ran a couple of hours. But of yeah. course you realize at the end of that event that she really didn't get a lot of time, Right. probably didn't have a conversation right. with anybody at that event because the whole format of that event right. doesn't really kind of allow that to happen. Yep. Whereas, <clears throat> once again, for the kids who are coming from a distance, mm -hmm. What's really special is that you're just seeing them. Right. It's just the presence of them. That's and you don't mean. have to be, yep. and the fact that the conversation lags, mm -hmm. that's okay. That's okay. You know, you yeah. get to a certain, it's, it's, the, it's the fact that you're there. Right. It's the fact that you're there. Right. Well, so, listen. I, well, I'm has that been helpful? I was just yeah. going to say, just tone it down a little bit and really try to spend some quality time. It really is all about spending quality time. And it's, right. quality, and it's what they consider quality time not what you consider quality time. Right, right, which may be a, at a slightly different pace right. from the pace that you're living. At a very different pace. So I really appreciate your coming on. I think that okay. the background ar around kind of what you folks mm -hmm. do is important. I know that inevitably when we're talking about your company, you're saying, you know, you, 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 we're not trying to get a whole bunch of new, we, we, right. what we really want is more folks who, who are employees who really want to do this, right. which is, just seems like such a wonderful thing. 
So to have that, and, but to also get a sense mm -hmm. of what, what you folks do, I think the advice around the holidays is oh, wonderful. Yeah. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Nice so, to be here. It's Thanks. been a great uh, year. This is our last show in 2019. Um, thank you very much if you've been watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much to Doug. Good. We'll see you in 2020 uh, for the next installment of Frank and Mary here in North Rome. Thank you Thanks. very much.